he ran for governor of um, Minnesota and successfully and was elected as a reform candidate, which in America is really hard to do, even harder than UK in some ways, to be a third party candidate um, successfully. And he did it through a grassroots internet based campaign um, running on kind of shaking up the system type message. And it's considered really the first um, campaign to, to um, created a lot of the rules or worked out how to use the internet for political campaigns. And his campaign manager, Phil Nielsen, put a 12-point plan for how to do it online, which is worth looking up if you're interested in that kind of thing. Um, he's now, um, Ventura, I found out in researching this, he's not since become a professor of government at Harvard University. <laughs> And he's considering running for president next time. So, um, this is another campaign which I which I love, or I use the internet in political campaigning. It's one of my favourites. If I click on this, will it play? Do we know? Would it open? Is it worth doing? If not, I've got a room full of people. I'm sure who can. Uh, <laughs> It runs for a couple of minutes, so hopefully we'll get a little bit of This is Nicolas Sarkozy. What you could do, you could stick him on the dance floor, put different tracks on, change his moves. And France became completely obsessed with this. Disco Sarko. And it's well worth checking out properly because the actual moves are really funny. And how do I, how do I get my slides back up on here? Sorry, no, it's not. <laughs> okay. Oh, it has come. It has come. Your one, not me. Well, hopefully that was worth seeing. <laughs> My main point about that, I mean, that, that since then, lots of, there have been lots of funny things like that in campaigns, and people have made, these days, apps and um, online films. The thing that I found most interesting about that one, apart from the dance moves, is um, the Sarkozy campaign, actually, it's quite satirical, because he was going after the youth vote, and he got a lot of flack for um, not doing it properly and being kind of all youth and um, not getting it quite right, like politicians tend to do. Um, and that was something really satirizing that, but it was made by his own campaign group, um, so it became hugely popular, and at the end of it, they got uh, the mainly young audience to sign up to an email list and were getting messages from his own campaign. Um, in the UK, um, every election that comes round is always... Um, the media looks at use of the internet and says this time it's going to be the internet election or whatever. But no, you, I'm sure you look, this audience will have noticed that senior politicians in the UK aren't actually very good at um, using it. And uh, it's all, it tends to, the reporting afterwards always says it uh, hasn't really gone off properly and people haven't used it again. It's been a damp squib. Um, so I've lost my notes again on here. Um, just bear with me one second. Okay. Uh, click in the middle. Uh, move things around in a weird manner. Okay. 
Um, but in fact, what, what it tends to show in the UK is that um, the use t is more people looking at official sites, people getting information. Um, about 25% of people at the last general election looked at an official source, party source of election information. And nearly half looked at a non-official. Is that a damp squib? Kind of. But it also means that gradually um, half of us are looking online for election stuff. And this is one of the kind of disco sarco type stuff that's happened in the UK. Crouching Tony, Hidden Hague. Remember that? This is the kind of stuff that people tend to remember rather than the uh, candidate information. There's a serious point about the funny stuff, actually, um, which is that you have to do what becomes viral and what works. Um, E-transparency, the accountability piece, the internet is fantastic at that kind of thing because you can crowdsource information and get different people looking at what's happening, putting it online and accessing it from anywhere. Um, one of the uh, good UK examples, um, My Society, which many of you will have heard of, has done a lot of work in this area. Um, one of the best sites um, in terms of information about democracy is They Work For You, where you can access information about your elected representatives, sign up and it will then just use your postcode, you don't need to know in advance who they even are, and then it will push you information by email whenever they stand up in Parliament or um, do anything, and it will send you what they said. Um, it's quite um, it's quite interesting because you think you know what the inter you might think you know what the main interests of your MP are, <laughs> but you'll find you don't necessarily know until you get their speeches popping into your inbox. In countries where democracy is less established, or even non-democracies, stuff like this is even can be even more powerful. As a site that started in India, I paid a bribe .com, which uses the power of the internet in a, in a um, a really powerful way where anyone, and, and a safe way, I guess, as well, because anyone who has um, paid a bribe for something they shouldn't pay, have paid a bribe for can record it and say when and where they had to do it and how much they had to pay, but they don't have to say what the, who, exactly who the official was or who they are, so there's no kind of payback. Um, it's a great website. You, I don't know if you can see it properly up there. Um, bribe asks for vehicle registration, bribe for police verification. Asking bribe for attestation, paid bribe to an officer at village office, and all the little details come up. And then there's um, bribe analytics data, and a, a running total of the amount of bribes: 225.96 CR, which is crore, which is an Asian numbering system. It means 10 million, so that's 2 billion rupees so far of bribes recorded. E-voting is a bit of an issue on its own, um, which tends to really polarise people. Um, one of the reasons people get interested, can uh, the internet or digital technologies be used for that part of the democratic system, actually voting itself? Would that maybe um, increase turnout? Um, would it make it easier for people who were going to do it anyway? That kind of thing. Um, a lot of it has its fans, and there's a lot of technology um, being developed, but then it has um, a lot of people also extremely worried about could this actually be um, a less secure way, um, a less private way. Um, and these, a lot of the early studies so far um, show that it doesn't actually seem to increase turnout that much. You know, disengagement is called apathy, but it's more disengagement. It's not so much that people can't be bothered to vote because there aren't convenient ways to do it. It's because they don't want to vote. Um, having said all that, it's not a topic that's going away. And there's the Speaker of the House of Commons at the moment um, has set up something called the Commission on Digital Democracy, which has considered a lot of these issues and is look, going to look at e-voting in the autumn. So if, if this is an area you're interested in, you should take a look at their website and get involved in that discussion it's going to be an influential policy paper. E-government, local e-government is the piece where once people are elected and they do stuff, um, are they using technology properly to, to serve the citizen? Um, 
uh, to which the answer has generally been no uh, in uh, the last decade or so. Um, it's getting a little bit better. Um, in central government, they've brought together a lot of the diverse online services now under one team, under one model, um, Gov UK. Have we heard of that, that website? Yeah. Um, it's much more usable than the, the old online stuff, more user-centered. Um, but the problem now, really, with I guess, is with the back-end stuff, it, is all of government doing the technology properly in their own bit and feeding it in properly to the, to the sort of front-end bit? Um, and again, the answer is probably no at the moment. Um, there's also tensions. Government's a huge, expensive thing. Um, and some departments in particular, the ones that are really huge and handle huge amounts of money, the financial departments, the benefits, um, tend to really resist feeding into nice, um, uh, the, the Gov UK kind of concept of nice, easy front ends. Um, so there's kind of battles being fought there. With local councils, again, huge area. One thing that I found out about recently that I thought was really interesting and kind of captured something interesting about the uh, potential technology here to be used in a good way. Um, it's something that the uh, West Yorkshire Fire Service is doing in Sheffield with a group of um, universities. And what they're doing is they extract, they're using masses of sources of data, I guess most of it open data, to predict where fires are going to happen um, and model responses. So they're using large scale um, simulation. They're using geographical data, demographic data, behavioral data, times of year, times of day, millions of different sources. So obviously they've done stuff like this before. Um, you'd have, in planning any public service, you'd be thinking about peak times or whatever. Now, I thought this was an interesting point, though, about the new potential, um, given more and more sources of data and more and more complex technologies, um, potentially services will be you know really quite tech driven in a sense and again are they setting up for it properly are they doing it properly i guess you could think that was quite a minority report as well that sort of predicting when things are going to happen <laughs> um, but it's all about motivation and accountability if it's done by a bunch of people spending public money to serve the public then it's going to be worth it worth doing in that way Okay, I might s skip through a few of these because I'm running out of time. I think I might just mention the Movimenti Cinque Stelle, or however you say the five-star movement in, uh, in English. Do we have any, anyone from Italy in here? Ah, oh, maybe you can say a bit about it when we go to question. Is, that, is this something that you're interested in, the five-star movement? Okay. Uh, I know that they have a blog and they're kind of trying to implement this kind of digital technology to kind of have these custom debates in the blog and voting. Yeah, so, th I mean, they're, they're, they're essentially, a lot of their policy making and decision making is, is crowdsourced online, I guess we call it. It's a response partly to the particular Italian situation of politics being perceived as and perhaps being extremely corrupt. Um, so it, people racking their brains and thinking, how can we actually make a system where decisions are made without corporate influence? And the answer is, we don't let any, any politicians make any decision. Um, so they create these online platforms. This is the guy, the guy who is in charge of it, um, Beppe Grillo, um, is a comedian, yeah. um, but obviously not just a comedian. Um, and one of the issues, I mean, he's in quite strong control, so although it's quite decentralized, um, there is often uh, tensions about can you run something completely decentralized or do you have to have um, that kind of central control? Um, but this isn't a small thing, this isn't a wacky thing. In the recent European Parliament elections, they won 21% uh, of the vote. They won 26% of the vote the last Italian general election. I mean, they're huge, basically. They're a real political force in Italy. Um, 
they're not the first party, they're not actually in government, national government, but they have huge representation at every level. They have mayors, they have regional councils, um, and they make their policy completely online. Yeah, well, I'll whiz through to this bit, a couple of the problems. Um, what are the problems with all this kind of stuff? Um, direct democracy is not without its problems. You know, it's a lot of the online models or digital models, um, more direct participation, because that's, in a sense, what the internet is good at doing. Um, there can be problems with that. One is representation issue. Are oh, the group of people that will come online and participate representative of a whole nation are you guys a cross-section of UK society <laughs> to make decisions um, it's not just you guys these days that are online obviously um, but these are serious probably the biggest problem I guess in some ways with direct democracy you want democracy is for everyone including the vulnerable the voiceless the people that don't or can't participate in anything um, so an election is about the best way to sort of, it's not all the time, but to, to feed that mechanism into democracy. Um, direct democracy kind of circumvents that all the time. The tumbleweed tantrums and trolls is just about the online problems with online debate. Um, those are just three of many potential issues that you come up with if you try and do something serious and meaningful online and debate uh, issues. Um, and what the internet, I guess, tends to be, is a catalyst. It, it, you need to get momentum. You need to have something that works in the first place. You need to capture an issue that people are interested in in the first place. So with the Five Star Movement, people are fed up with corruption. Um, with anything that really takes off, even think about this ice bucket challenge, um, which is going on at the moment, which is one of the, possibly the most successful online campaigns. How, how come, how has that happened that almost everyone's heard of it, loads of people have done it, everyone's been trying to kind of spark viral campaigns. And what it's done is it's captured a kind of perfect grouping of things, it's done something funny, it's done something where people involve their friends and social networks, um, and it's tapped into people's existing desire to give a little bit of money to a good cause kind of thing. So that's... The clever bit, it's not the internet, I don't think, it's not a country in itself, it won't come in and revolutionise and make society good, but if, if um, you guys can think about how it can make things better and angle your work a little bit in that direction uh, and get involved in democracy, um, then that's the way to think about it. I'm gonna, I did, have, I, I did have more ideas. I mentioned the meetup as well. If you're interested in talking more and finding out more, come at half past eight to the workshop area um, and we'll have a further chat. But does anyone have any, have any immediate questions or please, or comments or stuff I haven't raised that you were hoping that I would talk about? So if oh. Thank you. So if we are left with Sarko Disco as a future of e-voting and whatever, uh, the democracy is going to end pretty soon. I mean, if you're not viral, you're not getting elected, it's kind of, we're losing the point. Yeah. Is there any hope? <laughs> oh, that's a profound question. Um, it's to do with what people want and find fun, isn't it? This, this, the Circo Disco is not, you know, not, that's not the whole of French democracy or the whole campaign. This was a successful use of digital tools for that piece of, a, of the democratic process, which is a necessary piece. You need to campaign, you need to, these days, I guess, capture an audience and then tell it, hopefully, your policy message. That got people onto the email list. The young people became Sarconauts, I think they were called. And then the campaign sent them some messages which hopefully were a bit more serious than that. Is there any hope? Not sure. Any other? Yeah. Can you, sorry, can you wait for the mic or do they need to? Or shall I just repeat what he says? Oh. Hello. Oh, God, that's loud. Um, so, digital democracy gets thrown around as a term quite a lot. Um, but obviously, as we move into a more and more 
digital world, one of the things that, that uh, keeps getting mentioned at the Digital Democracy Commission that you mentioned is that actually what they're talking about is not digital democracy, it's just democracy in, you know, in, in the world that we're moving into. So is it necessarily a thing or is it just a reinvention of the an, an evolution That's of the whole system? That's a complaint. I don't, uh, no, actually, no, not at yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I quite like them just to talk about democracy in some ways because I think the bigger problem for me is engaging with democracy, understanding of democracy. You know, no, in a, there isn't really such a thing separately to me as digital democracy. There's democracy, there's now the digital world, um, there's good and bad ways then or different people can, can use and so I'm interested in that area but no, only if it can improve democracy but Ultimately, yeah, it's important to focus on what, what is our democracy, how can it work better? You know, something like the Scottish independence vote, that's a nice democratic question. Yeah. Um, hi. Um, do you think um, elections and political parties are something that need to exist in digital democracy? Or do you think we could have purely crowd-controlled voting on issues? Um, I mean, are our parties something that might disappear in the future? Could we simply have people putting forward votes and ideas and formulating and, you know, via transparency, voting on yeah. the government themselves. I mean, I think, I doubt somehow for a whole nation. I, I think um, there are spaces within a democracy for perhaps larger and larger areas of decision to work like that. Um, gradually, as people develop the tools to do it well so that minorities' views aren't overlooked, um, that... Um, but all the time, I think there will probably have to be an underlying accountability of the of the bigger area, in a sense. I mean, budget is another issue. Um, there, are, there are quite interesting exercises in participatory budgeting, it's called, which basically means that a, an authority gives a chunk of money and then s gives a, a mechanism for people, people themselves to decide how that's spent. So essentially, that's what government is really, deciding how to spend money. Um, and sometimes quite interesting things happen, um, and things dif happen differently to when the people, when a government of any kind, even if it's elected, would decide how to spend that money. Um, but I do, I mean, I do think democracy is necessary for, I suppose, freedom. Um, if you have a, any bunch of people, EMS is quite an interesting experiment in organising stuff collaboratively. Um, but you do need. I think you do. You always need a system where, which knows what's going on, and uh, a way of, of of volunteering and discussing. And um, an election seems to me the best way to work out who ultimately is in control, um, because any other way that I've heard about, you know, is not better. So I don't know if that answers any of your questions. I think probably partly is what I'm saying. You know, the, yeah. Yeah. Following, following up on that one, because it originally sounded idyllic to me, but when I thought more about that, you're going to have a lot of people who will just vote like but David Beckham votes or whatever. You won't well, you can't change people, unfortunately. Exactly. You yeah. won't necessarily have better thinking or engagement, even De if you made the voting compulsory. Depending on what, on, 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 on what I means by better, yeah. I mean... Yeah. Um, They're just going to follow public figures. Yeah who will what, effectively become politicians. What's right for a nation isn't necessarily what one personally thinks is right. And, you know, I guess, there's, is there such a thing as right and wrong? And it goes to really profound questions like that. I think it just comes, to me, comes down to a practical level, which is, I think you've got to have a system of government and uh, a form of democracy is the best system com compared to all the other ones. You know, it's Churchill's old... Um, there are problems with many problems with democracy and that's one of them is what you just described you know not everyone has a deep understanding of issues and makes uh wise choices and all the rest of it but unfortunately that's that's life yeah we were focusing mostly on elections here but do you have any good examples of people actually using um, you know internet and whatever to show people okay you elected me that's what I've done for you 
uh, that's my accountability because everyone wants to get there but once they get there being accountable that's a whole different story well accountability is one thing politicians telling you what they've done i mean a politician will always tell you what they've done is good and what they said they do and that kind of stuff and that's natural i mean you can be, you can say that's terrible that's we would all do that in a sense about talking about our own uh, the way the internet's good for accountability is much more though other people finding stuff out you know a group of people look comparing manifesto promises with what has happened, that kind of stuff. The internet's great for that kind of stuff. Um, that's where the accountability comes from, bottom up. All the top needs to do is let that happen, you know, make sure freedom of, of I guess, you know, freedom of speech, the basic freedoms, you know, which we do have, basically, compared to most other countries, yeah. Just curious about what you thought about the interaction with media in this, because obviously a lot of people are educated by the media. So if the media was nobbled by corporations and the media can influence what the voters would do, do you think there's a greater chance of lobbyists and media being able to corrupt and subvert the dem democratic system? Uh, well, speaking as a journalist, um, I mean, when I, slightly, um, whenever I hear the media, I'm always... I mean, the, me the media includes everything from the Sun and um, corporate-owned outlets to um, newspapers and outlets that are more serious to BBC, which is supposed to be funded to be neutral and smaller these days. Yeah, it's a very diverse thing. So there is lots of good stuff and lots of good journalism, and there's more corporate. There, there is an element of corporate influence. And one of the points I'd always make there is that you know, these are these are important issues to think about, but these are issues that exist in every nation, and they are worse in non-democratic nations. So, um, corporate influence in somewhere like Russia, there's no separation between the companies and the people around the country in countries like that, because there's no kind of me people mechanism. In this country, in democracies, corporate influence is something we need to be careful about, watch out for, definitely. Um, we have more of the tools to do it, and we need to do it, you know. The answer isn't to attack democracy, in my view. Very, very short uh, just to pick up a few things that were mentioned, and I'll be very brief. So you, you made this comment, we want to have better thinking, and that's, that's something worth uh, thinking about this statement. To me, it's not that clear. And uh, what, what you said earlier, uh, the, the internet-connected crowd is very good at information gathering. I think we will be better at collecting information and then making that available to people who want to inform themselves. And that is something where we can already see uh, differences to previous, uh, previous decades. Thank you. Was that a question? All right. <laughs> 30 talk again now, and then we applaud, yes? Oh yeah, so um, yeah, so let's carry on talking. I mean, it's great, there's an interest. If you've got things that you wanted to, to raise or if you want to come talk, it's not just be to me. There's James here who's running for parliament on policies that will be partly selected online. So there's, um, there's other people at EMF who are really, some really leading people in this field and we're going to try and get them together at 8.30 in the workshop space. So come and carry on. A bit. I think you can bring a beer as well. I don't know. No, we're not going to stop you. Yeah, so see you later. Thanks.